This is the Motorola Edge 30 Pro, a proper flagship phone with Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 at Rs. 49999. Yeah, that is an interesting price for a flagship phone like this. I mean, if you look at other 8 Gen 1 flagships in India, there's the iQ 9 Pro that starts at Rs. 65,000. There's the Galaxy S22 that's coming with 8 Gen 1 and that will be launching at 73K. So the Motorola Edge 30 Pro at Rs. 50K is way more affordable. I mean, 50K is the sweet spot for Android flagships if you ask me. So basically, there are two questions. Is the Motorola Edge 30 Pro a good balanced flagship? Are there any cost cuttings to get to this price? Well, I'm gonna answer both of those questions, but let's start with the first one. So the Motorola Edge 30 Pro does have features that I expect in a flagship phone. First of all, this looks like a high-end phone. There's the matte finished Gorilla Glass 5 back, and while the color is blue, it has this sort of gradient, which sometimes makes it look black and sometimes even green when there's light falling on it. I also like that the phone is very sleek and it's below the 200 gram threshold, which is what I like. Now the power button is a bit too high, but maybe I'll get used to it. Now I said flagship features because this has support for wireless charging as well as reverse wireless power sharing. Yeah, that is good. I mean, this is one feature I always expect in a flagship. I also like that even though there's no headphone jack or micro SD slot in typical flagship style, it has a USB 3.1 USB-C port. This is important because a lot of recent high-end phones like the OnePlus 9 RT or even the iQ9 or even the flagship iQ9 Pro have USB 2.0 USB-C ports, so this is good. Also, the phone has a stereo speaker setup. I mean, this is one feature that I was badly missing in the Edge 20 Pro, so I'm glad that this phone has it. The display is flagship P2. It has this AMOLED panel and here are all the specs. And this is actually the same display as the Edge 20 Pro and that's fine because this is a bright, sharp and very vibrant panel. And it's got the very fast 144Hz refresh rate, which makes the UI seem super smooth. There's also HDR10 plus support in apps like Prime Video, which is awesome. I mean, I watched some HDR shows on Prime Video and it looks very crisp and nice. Then there's the flagship Snapdragon chipset, 8 Gen 1 under the hood, along with UFS 3.1 storage, LPDDR5 RAM, all flagship specs. And the benchmarks obviously show that this is a very powerful phone. Now I know with 8 Gen 1, there's obviously the whole doubt of thermal throttling issues and I checked it on the H30 Pro. See, sometimes the phone does well in the test, as you can see, throttling to only 93% of its max performance, but the performance numbers seem limited. Sometimes it does decently throttling to 72% with no red in the graph, and sometimes it does throttle, as you can see in the screenshot. So the H Gen 1 on the Motorola H30 Pro is a bit inconsistent when it comes to the thermal throttling. When it comes to real world usage though, the phone feels like a flagship when you use it. Everything is just very responsive, be it scrolling, multitasking, using different apps, there's no lag. I also noticed that the camera app is faster, the shutter lag is super low no matter which camera you're using, and gaming is good too. BGMI at Ultra HD graphics and ultra frame rates is smooth and nice. It's basically the experience you expect from a flagship phone. Look, I haven't put in my SIM card in this phone to use it as my daily driver, but so far the performance is good. As for the thermal throttling issues hampering the day-to-day -day performance, that hasn't happened yet, but I will be testing it in the long run to get a better idea. There's no cost cutting on the battery or charging front, fairly good sized battery as you can see, and Motorola has finally brought a very fast 68 watt charger in the box. This is a charger and I like that it's a USB PD charger because one, this means the phone supports USB PD charging, and two, you'll be able to use it with other devices. As for the charging speeds, 10 to 50% in 15 minutes, and 100% in around 15 minutes. Coming to the cameras, the main camera is a 50 megapixel sensor with OIS, omnidirectional autofocus, and, and even the ultra wide angle sensor is a 50 megapixel sensor. Now the photos from the main camera look like they've been taken from a good high-end phone with a lot of detail, punchy colors. In low light, it's not the best out there, but the photos are bright and sharp. Anyway, the rear camera has support for 8K 24 FPS or 30 FPS videos, and there's also 4K 60 FPS support. The ultra wide angle camera is good too. Unlike a lot of other wide sensors, it does not totally wash out the details and it matches the colors of the main camera most of the times, which is pretty good. The selfie camera, as you can see, is pretty interesting. A 60 megapixel sensor on the front with the quad pixel tech and you can take 60 megapixel shots or you can choose between 15 megapixel and 8 megapixel. I took photos in the recommended 15 megapixel mode and the selfies are actually very sharp and detailed. The front camera also has 4K video recording support and here's a video I shot and it's good. Just look at the details and the sharpness. Now one of the big USPs of Motorola is the clean software experience and it's even better on the H30 Pro because it has Android 12 on board and the experience is actually pixel-like. I mean you get the material you themed, quick settings and notifications, there's also the settings page 
and Alighted Motorola has implemented the dynamic theming feature. Here in the personalizations page, you can choose between the different colors for the theming, or you can pick the colors from the wallpaper like this. There's also the new Android 12 widgets, be these cool clock widgets, the new YouTube music widget, the Gmail widget or more. Since it's a true Android 12 experience, especially with all the cool animations, and it just makes using this phone so much fun. Now there is the Motorola app with all the really cool gestures and there's also the ready for feature which also works wirelessly. As for software support, Motorola has confirmed Android 13 and 14 for this phone and there's three years of security patches. There's also no cost cuttings in the connectivity. There are 13 5G bands, Wi-Fi 6C, 3CA support with 4x4 MIMO and Bluetooth 5.2. Now what exactly are the cost cuttings in the Motorola H30 Pro? Well, there are a few. First of all, the frame of the H30 Pro is plastic. Not a big deal, but yeah. Also, the fingerprint scanner is in the power button. I mean, it's fast and nice, but I would have liked an in-display scanner in a flagship phone like this. Another cost cutting, if you ask me, is the IP52 rating. Most flagships have IP67 or 68 water and dust resistance, and IP52 is just splash resistance. There's also no telephoto lens, which even the H20 Pro had, so I'm guessing Motorola skipped that to get this price for the H30 Pro. Also, one last thing, the H30 Pro has most of the sensors except for barometer, which all flagships have. Now, to conclude things, the question is, is the Motorola H30 Pro a good balanced flagship or are these cost cuttings deal breakers? Well, personally, I think the 50K price tag of the Motorola H30 Pro is very good. And by the way, Motorola is also offering rupees 5,000 discount on SBI credit cards. So if you happen to have one, you can basically get this phone for 45K. Look, Motorola has skipped a few features to get this great price, but I think they have managed to get the basics, the balance of a flagship right. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 is the latest and greatest, even with its thermal throttling doubts. The battery is fairly big, there's very fast charging with wireless charging supported, and the Android 12 experience is great. No other flagship in India has this pixel-like experience. So the Motorola H30 Pro seems like a good deal, but I want to know what you guys think of this phone, the price, comment down below. Also, give this video a like, make sure to share it and subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. That's me signing off. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. This phone has a really cool feature. This is the size of the fingerprint scanner on a normal Android phone.